How's it going everyone? My name is Dave and welcome to another Discussions and Rants video. I'm actually going to be doing two uh, Discussion and Rants videos with this weekend uh, because of all the support that this series has been getting and I've been getting a lot of requests to do these more often. So I'm at least going to try doing two of them. Um, first off, before I continue, if you guys hear any yelling or screaming in the background, I apologize. It is 12, it's almost 1 in the morning. I've been trying to sleep, but I can't because of the idiot who's my roommate who won't shut up. So I decided to do this. I actually was going to do it tomorrow morning, well, later this morning, I guess you could say. But anyway, let's go ahead and get to it. So for those of you who, well, first off, I'm just going to repeat it in case I did. I don't know if I, I can't remember whether I said it before, but I'm actually going to be talking about the Kubler-Ross uh, model. For those of you who don't know what the Kubler-Ross model is, it's more commonly known as the five stages of grief. Now, to go through it, I'm going to go one by one and kind of discuss my thoughts on it and my best examples that I think are the case for this. Um, we'll start with the first stage. The first stage of it is denial. Now, a lot of us go through denial. The, when you don't experience what activates the five stages of grief, the passing of someone you really care about, then you cannot fully understand what this refers to. No one ever wants to believe that someone they care about is gone. There are a lot of people out there who have actually kind of built their own beliefs off of this denial. Now, some of these beliefs actually end up being, you know, realistically feasible and makes sense just kind of leading to different um either religions or teachings or whatever you want to call it but denial in on its own is a very complex feeling because of it personally i have never experienced the five stages of grief but i know one person who has and still experiences it to his day this day his name will remain unknown but this person, out of no care for his, the person he lost, um, took it, like, he, he denied it. He did not want to believe it at first. Um, it took maybe a week or so for that to bypass, but denial is never a good feeling. Like, all of us experience denial, but this kind of denial, even in studying, I can say this much. I write, I write up this kind of stuff all the time. I create stories myself. This is why I can at least relate in some kind of way. Denial is not a good feeling. You never want to experience it, but it's necessary. It's like, it's that impact that kind of just hits you going, wait, what? And you're just in shock. It's kind of another way of showing denial. Now, this is an over-exaggerated term. A lot of the time, it's not actually true. But a good, relatable statement to use would be PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder. Now, that's not what it is at all. In fact, PTSD, the real version of it, hardly ever happens. A lot of the time when people refer to it, it's not real PTSD, it's just them getting shocked and frozen for a bit. That kind of PTSD is what refers to as denial. And, well, a lot of people experience it. I hate thinking about it. I've actually written down in a partially completed story before about somebody losing someone else, and I actually had to research that this and because of the kind of heart that I have it hurts to see this happen now this video is not directly towards the mouth towards all five stages so with those examples thrown out there uh, let's go to stage two which is anger quite frankly this one doesn't happen to everybody and I've seen perfect evidence of this one person, it's more like, how much can you handle the loss that you've done? The 
those who can't usually go through all five stages, but there are some out there who don't need to. My mom lost her um, grandfather a while ago, and they were very, very close. She was, I, I know this because I was with her throughout part of the time that she was going down those last few weeks that she had with him. And I was there during the funeral. Now, I didn't spend as much time with him as, I didn't know him as well as she did, so I can't give off the same thought process as she does, but one thing that she did not do was give off any anger. And that, my friends, is the second stage. I find it interesting, this is kind of where my own opinions come into play, this one stage. The previous stage, I can't give opinion because there's no real way to give opinion on denial without offending somebody. And this happens a lot, trust me, I've tried. But, anger, on the other hand, anger is over-exaggerated a lot, even under this front. And... I think, honestly, that it could be because of the experiences I've had with people who I know who have gone through loss and yet don't show any sign of anger. Maybe they can pack it in their hearts and it just blows away. Maybe they don't. But because not everybody needs to get angry over it, and they can show it in different senses, anger is the kind of state where it's like it's, it's sad. I'm not going to say it's pathetic because it's, it really isn't. Mentally, maybe they are angry. Maybe they are frustrated. Anger is the only one that can get skipped, which is why I give my opinion of it's not necessary. I've seen people get angry over this kind of stuff, and it leads them to nowhere. Now, this is all the time, but there are certain circumstances where anger itself in these stages it doesn't just lead them to nowhere, it will lead them to even worse scenarios. Like, they won't just lose someone, but they'll also lose themselves. This ends up leading to the third stage if the person doesn't get themselves into any trouble. And for those who don't experience anger, also always experience this. This one I've seen, and it's always a sad sight to see. I, it breaks my heart to see this stage, which is bargaining. A lot of people will try to give up so much just to get the person back. A good example of this, and it does involve a loss as well, are... Let me see if I can pull up their names. I actually do not remember. Where I'm looking right now is actually my um, web browser... I have it up just in case I need the information. It turns out I needed it more than I thought I would. Um, so, a good example of what I'm referring to would be Chester Bennington the lead singer of Linkin Park. Now, the reason I say this very specific person, for those who don't know, you probably haven't heard Linkin Park songs before, or I don't know, but Chester Bennington was actually one of two people who had committed suicide. Now, bringing that up, I do want to I, I do want to mention that the, the exact events that happened to him, for those who don't know, I'll go ahead and go through that really quick. Um, what happened back three years as of this well, not exactly three years, but July 20th in 2017, he, uh, he was found in his home dead. Um, hung. At least that's what it was ruled as. That, that's what the end report stated. 
Now, this had happened side by side with another death. Um, I, based off experience, what I like, based off of what news kind of gave off. Now, I can't remember whether this one was speculation or not, but the word was saying that because he had lost someone else. To suicide he did it himself and maybe I've got the names reversed maybe he was the one but I do remember there were two people who committed suicide and I think it was Bennington who did it second um, but one way or the other the, the point of this example is that suicide was the bargain itself when you think about it Bargained his own life to see the alternative again. It's a horrible way of doing it, and a lot of suicides go this way, and it is it is very sad. Understandable why the person would think this way, but sometimes it just happens because of that, and sometimes it's not even that one. Sometimes the suicides come from the fourth stage, depression. You lose someone, and all of, a, all of a sudden you're just depressed. Some people do it to an extreme extent. In all honesty, that was me at a point in time. I actually... I have a mark that's like right here on my chest that ended up coming from me almost ending my own life over it and if it wasn't for my silver if it wasn't for silver my current girlfriend right now I'd probably be dead but she stepped in and one thing that I've noticed and I'm not the only one one thing that I've noticed is that if you have someone very close to you who's always there it makes it easier to get through that and not just that it's all five stages You'll jump from denial to acceptance like that, which, by the way, acceptance is the last stage. Um, but as so long, I've noticed that so long as someone always has somebody by their side, the other three stages never happen. It's a pattern I've noticed, but it doesn't always work. And it is very sad that that happens, but it's unfortunately the reality of it now to uplift the thing and get to the last stay last stage of grief acceptance it is a very it, it's very nice to see somebody to get to that end point to the point of acceptance to realize all right i guess there's nothing i can do just move forward we'll miss the person but they'll never be forgotten but Sometimes people just gotta learn to accept it, and it's not easy. I know that. It's never easy to accept anything that's hard, and that, even by statistic or by experience, it doesn't matter what way you look at it, death is the hard, one of the hardest things to always get over. And there are always some people who just don't. Now there is a reason I'm talking about this. I am planning something for future reference, but that's a gaming thing, and that will be a discussion for a different day. Uh, if you guys have any um, any thoughts or opinions that you have about the five stages of grief, uh, let me know in the comments below. I am going. This was more, I guess, kind of me discussing what I know about it and what I feel about the situation, rather than generic opinion like all my other previous videos. But if you do agree with anything I've said, or you have anything to add, let me know in the comments below. Want to check out any other discussions and rants that I've done in the past, or might be doing now, depends on when you see this. Um, I'll have that in one of the annotations here. The other one will be gaming footage. It'll be on your left for the annotation for discussion and rant, and the right for the game. If you do really like these, this kind of stuff, uh, consider subscribing to the channel. 
either click here or down there somewhere depends on if you're watching this on a computer tv or phone uh anyway with that being said i do post this at least once every week might start doing it twice but once again thank you guys so much for watching i'm gonna head off but i'll see you guys in the next video bye now